A lot of people think this is the middle of nowhere. You've really got to want to come here to enjoy our food. We have customers that come in and said they've been driving by this place for years and never really noticed that there was a restaurant here. Le gusta mucho la carne asada, enchiladas en salsa verde, es uno de los favoritos también. Let's go girls, come on. We don't do any advertising, so everything's by word of mouth. Entonces si les sorprende mucho que soy mexicana, que estoy aquí, que está un restaurante mexicano en medio de la nada. So we're in the town of Meredith, New York, about three and a half hours from New York City, on a farm at the top of a mountain. I'm Patrick Ryder, this is my wife Tanya, and we own and operate Granon Farms. We have this old dairy barn that we converted into a restaurant, and in that restaurant, my wife and her sisters and her brother and the rest of her family produce some really fantastic food. When you're driving in at the restaurant and you saw the barn, you never expect to walk in and look at all this. La manera en la que nosotros hacemos la comida es en base a, a mis raíces, a mis tradiciones y en base a las recetas de mi familia. Y para dar ese sabor real y auténtico, tienes que hacerlo a mano. Tenemos las fajitas, son muy populares, a la gente le encanta mucho, ya sea de pollo o de res. Nuestro mole, que lo preparamos también aquí y lo servimos con Cornish Gehen. Tenemos tacos de arrachera, lo tenemos un poquito de todo. Toda la carne sí son del rancho. Todo lo hacemos desde el principio. There you go. Bye, bye, amigo. Bye, bye, amigo. <laughs> First and foremost, we're a livestock farm. We farm about a thousand acres. We don't use any antibiotics and anything that goes to meat. Consuming our own meat is important because we know where it comes from. We know how it's been treated. When you take care of your animals, you end up with great quality meat. You put it into the hands of somebody that really knows how to cook it, then you end up with something, a, a really great meal. Mi morcajete se está calentando en el grill para mantener todo lo que servimos caliente y a una temperatura. Se dan cuenta cada vez que yo pongo algo empieza a tener ese sonidito y ese vaporcito porque realmente todo lo que es el volcán está realmente caliente. La base del, de la salsa es el tomate verde. Es todo lo que lleva ahorita el, de lo que es el volcán. Listo para degustar. Yo soy de la Ciudad de México. Aprendí a cocinar de mi abuela y mi mamá. Este, cada vez que yo estaba en la casa de mi abuela era obligación estar en la cocina porque cocinamos muy al estilo como es en los viejos tiempos. El mole hacemos solamente baches una vez al mes porque pues el mole lleva una preparación bastante extensa. Es mucho trabajo, muchísimos ingredientes. Estamos hablando de uh, un poco más de 30 ingredientes, 10 diferentes tipos de chiles, chocolate, plátano, café, especies. Este sí viene totalmente de, de, de mi abuela. Allá no está con nosotros. Espero que me esté viendo en algún lugar y me diga, lo apruebe lo que estoy haciendo. We met in Mexico 20 years ago. It was for sure love at first sight. And uh, we've been together ever since. <laughs> This bale is going to be about a thousand pounds. They'll eat this in a couple hours. When I was consulting in Mexico, I got an opportunity to see firsthand at how a lot of the food that I was consuming was being produced. The way that they were raising livestock, the chemicals that were being applied to the produce, I was stunned. These are some of our sheep and goats. We don't confine them either. She's just kind of curious and coming up to see how we're doing, see if she can get a free treat. We were thinking about starting a family at that point. You know, so this is going to be the time we're going to start family. We're going to do it back in the States. That came together at the same time that I really learned about industrial food. And it kind of said, you know, I think that's just one more reason to come up here to upstate New York. And when he mentioned New York, the first thing that came to my mind, that was Manhattan, right? I said, well, I can live in Manhattan for sure. I didn't even know it exists New York State. We started driving and driving and driving. And then, of course, the city disappeared. I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere, and Tanya recognized that we were, we were in the middle of nowhere. 
This is my son Patrick. He's four years old and he's quite a helper. Right, hold right on the bottle hard. You know, we really kind of thought of it more on the scale of a small homestead. Uh, we're going to have a few cattle, we're going to have a couple pigs. We can produce our own meat, we can grow own vegetables, and that's really how it kind of all started. Yo nunca había visto, creo, una vaca antes, en persona, o cerca. Nunca había, creo, había estado en un rancho. But I love it, and I love it here. I mean, it's amazing. Cuando por primera vez comenzamos procesar nuestros propios animales y comencé a probar la carne, he quedé sorprendida porque dije, esto realmente sí sabe. Y no necesitábamos ponerle nada más que sal y quizá un poquito de pimienta y estaba fantástico. I don't think we ever really thought uh, initially about starting a restaurant. That was never in the plan. And, but as time went on and as more customers got to know us, we got more and more requests for prepared foods. You know, before you know it, she said, you know, well, why don't we just open a restaurant? Este, este es el área donde tenemos la parte de el resto del menú que no es el grill. It's one thing when you cook for your family and you do like a party for 20 people, but when you are running a restaurant, it's way different. We prepare for a year, basically, and then we say, okay, let's open. I was really afraid to, to do this because I'm a Mexican, and I think I'm the only Mexican in the town, and who's gonna come over to have dinner here, right? And they said, yeah, I don't care. I wanna eat here. Como estamos en medio de la nada, hay mucha gente que incluso nunca tiene la oportunidad de tener comida mexicana hasta que vienen aquí. Cada vez que vienen mis clientes siempre me preguntan ¿por qué, ¿por qué estás aquí? ¿Estás, qué, ¿Qué haces aquí? No es lógico, no es, no es congruente. Y ya les digo, bueno, pues es que mi esposo, su familia es de aquí, ellos son de aquí y él pasó sus niñas aquí y le gusta aquí, me trajo aquí y por eso estoy aquí. Él es uh, Sandro, él es de la familia también, primo. Mi hermano Francisco, él está atendiendo el grill. Mi hermana Brenda, ella prácticamente está en todo. Ya aquí estamos en un lugar diferente, personas diferentes, costumbres muy diferentes. Es un poco complicado adaptarse, pero también es bonito aprender las raíces de aquí. Todos los que trabajamos aquí somos familia, de alguna u otra manera estamos relacionados, ya sea. Creo yo que ha sido la clave esencial para poder crecer como rancho, porque trabajando como familia realmente les importa. Sí, siéntate con, sienta, hazte para acá y deja sentar a Carlitos contigo. Entonces, primero jamás en la vida pensé que iba a conocer a un americano. Y segundo, que iba a terminar viviendo en los Estados Unidos. I mean, living here in the country without worry, without having this thing that you gotta lock the door, you gotta lock your car, you gotta watch your back all the time. I mean, that's amazing. Having my kids here and feeling this freedom and this safety. I mean, it's priceless. <laughs>